This is the third and the last installment of the APIs or application programming interfaces and how we can use them. And after showing how to fetch Bitcoin prices and Chuck Norris jokes in the first two, here we will show how to build a simple weather application. Interestingly, one of the biggest weather services, AccuWeather, has a free non-commercial API option and we will use their service to provide a current weather for any city in the world. Since we have shown a step-by-step -step block building in the first two times, here we will invert the lesson and first demonstrate the final app and then look under the hood and explain all the steps and components that are put together for it to work. Before we demonstrate the app, just a quick look at what is used in the designer editor here. At the top, we use the mini table that has two labels denoting a city and a country and inputs into their text fields. Below is a button that we press to refresh data after the city and country are entered. Next field below is the text box that will display a date and time when the weather data were collected. And finally, there are successive horizontal arrangements with descriptive labels on the left of the weather data that will be displayed next to each of these. Also note here, we added the AccuWeather logo at the very bottom since we use their free service. Lastly, in the non-visible components right here, there are web components for internet communication through APIs, as it was explained before. Okay, let's see now how the app executes. So here on the left, note that we use again the AI companion on the phone instead of the emulator and that the phone is directly mirrored here on the laptop screen. So let's first check, for instance, stay in the US. Uh, let's check Boston. So if we enter Boston, USA, right? then click refresh button and we're going to get right here the weather condition which tells us the date the time that the weather was collected general condition cloudy temperature pressure humidity and we see that there was some precipitation this is within the last hour okay so we'll come back to showcase more examples at the end. Let's now switch to showing the actual code. Before going into details, here's the big picture of the three main steps that we need to take. Most weather services are based on geological parameters, which are latitude and longitude. So when you type this uh, city right here, right? When you type this city and the country, what the code needs to do first is to convert city and country into these latitude and longitude that goes along with the city. So this is our first step that we need to take, no matter what. Now, the second step is specific for AccuWeather because they have their unique place identifier that is called location index that everything is based on. So we need to obtain that location index first that would be our second step before retrieving the current weather parameters for that location index, which is going to be our third and the last step. We will use API service from API Ninjas for geolocation, as we already used API Ninjas in the previous lesson, and then use AccuWeather API for weather conditions, including the location index. Both of these services require a free API key for access, which can be obtained in less than a minute. The other reason for using two different services is to show different ways that API key can be integrated into API calls, which we'll see in a moment. So the two API keys that uh, are defined here as global variables, right so first one is for the AccuWeather right here and then this one key is for the api ninjas um, note that you will need to obtain your own api keys so you will copy them right here if building these applications 
Besides API keys, several other variables are defined as we can see here, right? So this is the response from the API ninjas. This is the AccuWeather response. Uh, latitude, longitude, as we said, we need them and the uh, location index also that we're gonna need. So the first step when we uh, fill in the uh, city and the country, we click this button, right? This is the first uh, event handler. When the button is clicked, we're going to the API ninjas, look for the geolocation. Uh, this is the link that we need to address our request and it needs to be formed in this specific way where we tag the city that was entered and the country right along to form this full link. Uh, what is specific about API ninjas is that uh, this API key is requested to be entered into the header for this uh, call. So this is how we make the header. We see we need to uh, label it and to actually make a list of the label and the actual value. Once we uh, form this call, we execute it right here and then wait for the response from the API server. When we get this response, when we get this text response right here, this is our next event handler. Uh, we now uh, want to read right, the response and to retrieve information that we need. We check first if the response code is 200, which means that the communication was successful. If it is, we response content, which is a long string, convert first to the JSON format. We talked about the JSON a lot in the special lesson about dictionaries and JSON and previously anything related to APIs. Uh, once we convert it to JSON, then we know there's a key or a label and the, that is followed by the value. And this is what we're doing. We're looking, looking for the key, which is a latitude. Uh, we collect the latitude uh, uh, actual number value uh, from the response and the same holds for the longitude uh, collected for the key or for the label longitude and assign them to uh, respective global variable, right? Once we have a latitude and longitude, we're ready to make the call to AccuWeather and search for the location index that goes with this latitude and longitude. And this is the call that we're forming, right, for the location index to address it to the AccuWeather right here. Uh, this is the pointer that we need to make. And we see also, th this comes from the documentation as any other of these, we don't invent this, right? We just need to go to the respective uh, websites and, and check the documentation, how we need to form these calls, right? So what is interesting here, AccuWeather expects that the API key is essentially uh, bundled in this uh, target link. So we see that we follow this uh, uh, initial link with the API key and we tag the actual API key that we have and then we tag it with the latitude and longitude that are separately by a comma. So this is what is expected from us to send. Once we form this request, we actually execute it right here and then we wait for the response, right? So response when it's received this is now next event handler when location index we got the response we check the response code 200 means everything went smoothly there was a successful communication response that we receive again we convert to json format and then we look for the uh, labor or key which is called key and that is associated with the value for our uh, location index. That's how we retrieve the location index, assign it to our global variable location index, and then we're ready to make our final call, which is actually call to retrieve the weather conditions. So we preparing here, right, our call for a weather condition. Uh, this is the pointer and it's the same structure. We're making the call to AccuWeather, so it's exactly the same structure, but it asks us first to assign uh, uh, the global location index and then we are uh, requested to tag to that our API key, right? Which is what we do here. And since we want all the details of the weather conditions, there are many of them, we say that the details are true. If we don't say that, we're gonna get uh, abbreviated version 
of the weather conditions. Once we make this pointer, we make the call, right? And the very last step is essentially when we receive the call for the weather conditions, which is right here. When we get weather response, when we get text, we check the response code. If it's 200, it was successful. Convert the response content to JSON format right here. And then step by step, we're going to retrieve each of these parameters we're interested in that we want to display. So the first one, as you remember, was the date and time. Uh, the label is local obser observation date time. For that, we get the response, which is a string. And the way this string is sent to us, it has a date first and then the capital T and the time. And we, since we want to display it in a different way, we, we replace capital T right here with the comma condition at, and this is what was displayed, as you remember, and we'll see it again on a different example. Then we're searching for the condition value. The label as defined by the AccuWeather is weather text. We look for this key, we retrieve the value, and this is the text that's going to be uh, displayed next to the condition, right? And then the next of them. So we don't necessarily have to go through every single of these. So what's left is, is the temperature, pressure, humidity, and the precipitation. You see that the humidity has uh, the same structure as we had before. We just simply look for this uh, uh, key for the label relative humidity, we retrieve the value and we assign it to the humidity value. But the, the last three here that we want to look at, which is the temperature, pressure and the precipitation, uh, we actually have nested responses. And it's not just a simple response like this. And uh, we also discussed these in the, in the dictionaries and JSON lesson and we encountered them before as well. This is just a reminder. If we have a nested response, we need to go uh, through a list by walking key path. And key path means that we just start from the first one that we encounter. So there's going to be temperature. Within the temperature, there's going to be another, which is metric. Within the metric, there's going to be a value. So the value is our label next or, or just that immediately precedes the actual number. So we need to go through this whole sequence to retrieve this number and assign it to the temperature value. Uh, the same holds for the pressure, right? We see mar we have to march to pressure metric value and the same holds for the precipitation. We march through precipitation metric value, right? The only last thing right here to mention you notice that in each of these calls, if this response number is not 200, that means there was something wrong, we skip this right in this if loop and we go to this else option where we're going to display that there was some error in the communication if, if the communication to the API server was not successful, right? So this is pretty much everything that we need as I said, we can just go back and show a couple more examples here just for fun, right? So let's say we move a little bit more east where we go to Europe and we don't need to pick any major city, right? So we're going to go to Austria and uh, pick smaller city, which is Linz, right? Say. And the uh, good news is that AccuWeather is worldwide, covers the whole world. We can pick any location we wish. We're not uh, restricted in, uh, in any way. So here is right for Austria. We see dates obviously the same, but now local weather is uh, one o'clock past midnight, right? And we see what are the condition in Austria and Linz. Uh, no precipitation, very high humidity, right? And uh, let's say one more again, just for fun of it. Uh, move even more east. Uh, so let's say we go to uh, Phnom Penh, uh, which is in Cambodia. Right? So, okay, let's see what, how we're doing there. What's the weather in Cambodia? Uh, again, as we receive this response, 
uh, obviously the date is going to stay the same. Well, here it's a uh, morning. It's almost uh, seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, pretty high temperature, right? And pretty high humidity, no precipitation. Okay, so this uh, can conclude, right? This uh, uh, lecture, we've shown everything we wanted. Uh, one little thing, uh, we, you can obviously modify this in many ways and improve it in many ways. Uh, that you wish. Uh, I would just recommend one uh, simple thing. So for instance, if you go here to sensors, you have a location sensor right here. So if you use this location sensor and include that, you can get your current location, uh, its uh, latitude and longitude, and you could potentially, if, if that's what you want to do, right, you can skip this whole initial call that we had here uh, to API ninjas. So you would not need API ninjas at all to obtain uh, longitude and latitude. You can go straight to obtaining uh, a location index from the AccuWeather right here and then essentially uh, going proceeding to the last step which is to obtaining the actual weather. Okay. So this uh, concludes everything that we had to show here. Uh, I hope you had fun. And uh, uh, this is the third and the last uh, lesson on the use of the APIs, which are now also part, <coughs> uh, they are also uh, combined together, which you can also see here uh, on the screen. But uh, until the next uh, lesson, uh, goodbye.